Islamic law is one of the major legal systems in our world today. It includes a number of principles that can limit suffering and bring humanity in war in Muslim contexts, such as protecting civilians and non-combatants. Islamic law makes it clear that all fighting on the battlefield must be directed solely against enemy combatants. As made clear in the Quran, chapter 2 verse 190 and the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, civilians and non-combatants must not be deliberately harmed during the course of hostilities. This broad principle aligns with international humanitarian law where fighters must distinguish between combatants and civilians. Attacks against civilians or civilian objects, such as hospitals or places of worship, are prohibited. Islamic law also prohibits certain indiscriminate weapons in order to preserve the lives and human dignity of civilians and non-combatants and protect the environment. Medieval Muslim jurists prohibited using indiscriminate weapons of various kinds, such as poison or fire-tipped arrows. And like international humanitarian law, Islamic law calls for the humane treatment of detainees. This is expressed in the instructions by Prophet Muhammad to his soldiers to, quote, observe good treatment towards the prisoners. Unquote. Based on this instruction and other Islamic sources, torture and other forms of inhumane or cruel treatment is prohibited. Detainees must be provided with food, water, shelter and clothing. And detainees must be allowed contact with their families. So international humanitarian law and Islamic law share many of the same objectives. And we at the International Committee of the Red Cross remind warring parties of their responsibility to uphold these principles.